Well, good morning to you. You've survived another week. That's incredible. Who thought we would ever be here? Sunday number two now into our coronavirus situation. So many great communicators are out there on Facebook and YouTube giving us words of encouragement and inspiration, songs. Some are funny. Um, I love humor. I love to laugh. And certainly in these trying times, a little humor goes a long way, doesn't it? It's really a helpful thing. But I'm not going to be one of those people who are, you know, every other post on Facebook is an encouraging word of some kind. So that's good. There, there are plenty of those. We don't need to duplicate that. We've got that already. Instead, I'd like to turn the corner and maybe talk about the elephant in the room. I'll be a little more serious for a few minutes with you, if you don't mind. Are you prepared should you die? I'm a pastor, so I deal with funerals and death as a part of my calling. Some people didn't make it last week. It wasn't always the coronavirus that caused them to not make it. People die from all kinds of reasons. But I just got to thinking, are you really prepared? Can I just go over a few checkpoints with you just to make sure you've got your Ducks, if you have ducks, you've got them lined up. You know, we're creative people. We always find a way to survive, and we'll survive this crisis one way or another. But should the unthinkable happen, and I know that nobody intends to die. You don't. I don't. But are you ready if you did? Since everybody dies, nobody gets out alive, then the tragedy isn't death. The tragedy would be dying unprepared. Are you prepared? That's the question, isn't it? Usually people think of financial considerations, funeral arrangements, all those kinds of things. And, but the spiritual considerations are more important than anything else that you could ever consider. So I hope those other things are low in the list and you've taken the right spiritual preparations. As a pastor, it's, it's my concern about your soul, the spiritual condition of your life. There are lots of people in your neighborhood and friends and family who will help you. And if you need something, somebody will reach out and encourage you or bring you something that you need. If you can't get out, so, I mean, there are good people, Christians and otherwise, that are helping their neighbor. And that's as it should be. We're generous people. We're free and, and able to do that and help others. And that's as it should be. But if you consider your legacy for a moment, and by the way, everybody leaves a legacy. There's no exceptions to that. It's either a good one or a bad one, but you get to choose what legacy you will leave. And again, most people think in financial terms, but just considering for a moment. When, when you were young, did, did somebody take you to church or Sunday school, maybe a grandparent? Maybe a friend invited you to church and you went. So you have a, a little bit of a working knowledge about God, but not really an authority. Well, I would come to you today, not necessarily as the greatest of all authorities, but I have some working knowledge of what it means to be okay with Jesus. And I want to share that with you and perhaps lead you through a step or two that could change your life. Four quick things. Ready? If you had to meet God today, you should consider these four things. One, agree with God about what he says about his son, Jesus. He said, this is my son. I give to you to stand in your place and suffer and die to pay for your sins. Jesus is the Savior. Agree with God about that. Number two, once you've agreed that he's the Savior, make him your Savior. Have a conversation with him. It's called prayer. He's listening. He just is waiting for you to repent for your rebellion against God. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. You know you are. Everybody knows they're sinners. How many lies do you have to tell to be a liar? <laughs> One. We've all lied. We've all stolen something. There's nobody righteous. There's nobody perfect. Certainly not you and certainly not me. 
So each of us has to come to a place where we will acknowledge not only is God right about his son, Jesus being the Savior, we personalize it. Make him your Savior. Once you've done those two things, number three, tell somebody. Because your friends and your family are going to want to know where you are once you're gone. Let them know where you're going when you die. It will be a great source of comfort to them. Number four, this is important too. Invite them to share in your experience. Tell them why you know you know where you're going. Because you've had that conversation with Jesus. Invite them to have the same experience. What a comfort and a joy. If you do that, no matter what else is going on in this world, this will be the best week of your life ever. Once you get this squared away, you have peace like I cannot describe. The Bible describes it as a peace that the world can't give and the world can't take it away. It passes your understanding. It blows your mind. You have such an inner peace. Now may God bring that to you today as you talk to the Lord, tell him you agree with him, confess you've been wrong, share that with a friend, and invite them to join you in that. You'll be glad you did. I hope your day is blessed. May God be with you and grant you his great, great peace. Until next time, this is Pastor Dale.